Hello, everyone. Welcome to Development Palettes. I am Aaron Loomis coming to you from the Drew Estate Studio. With me today is June Liu, Seth Geis, John McTavish. How you guys doing? Good. I'm feeling a little blue. A little brulee blue. <laughs> All right, John, let the cat out of the bag. We are talking about the Dumb Mountain Tobacco and Trust Sobre Mesa Brulee Blue. Uh, cigar is a uh, Grand Corona, six and a quarter by 46. Comes out of the Hoya de Nicaragua factory in Nicaragua. Uh, wrapper is Ecuador, Connecticut Shade G2BW. Uh, oh, by, yeah, yeah. <laughs> by, yeah. Of Great two black and white. Oh, yeah. Binder is Mexican San Andreas Negro and the filters from Nicaragua. It is blended by Steve Saka. Price point is fourteen dollars and ninety-five cents. Cigar was released in August of two thousand and twenty, and we picked up these cigars from Lake Country Cigars in Wisconsin. So go to lccigars.com, get their phone number, give them a call, buy some cigars. They have a great selection. They'll take care of you. All right. So with all that out of the way, June, what was your overall experience like with the cigar? Uh, by the way, this the cigar name is a total nightmare for <laughs> Asian fob to pronounce. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Mike, can you not say brulee blue? Uh, I can because I'm the it, fob. It, 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 it has Cirque it has all the Missouri. letters. Yeah, ESL <laughs> people will have a really tough time if you're if you're a Canto or Mando speaker. Yeah. Thanks, Saka. God, racist. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the pre-light, like we were talking about before we went live on this one. So. Prelay was, uh, I mean, first of all, let's get the obvious out. The, the tip is sweetened, right? Um, so for sure that, but when I was smelling like the wrapper and the foot, um, I got this campfire note, uh, which, you know, it made me wonder like, hey, did this, I, I don't know why I would, uh, but I definitely got that. Uh, it wasn't in my head, you know, for cigar today, of course, being cigar review, uh, but so that was really unique. Uh, but in terms of the actual flavors of the cigar, I I like this for sure than more so than the uh, original brulee. Um, I thought that the cigar had um, a good amount of body, good toasted almonds, butter bread, oak. Um, I actually like the sweet cap because, like in a way, it gives it gave like an extra like dose of sugary um, and sweetness to it. Uh, not like a synthetic sweetness, but like a sugar cane kind of sweetness. Uh, and I really dug that. So overall, I thought it was good. Um, construction was great. Uh, Saka made stuff, uh, you know, for, especially out of, you know, Hoya. Um, have good marks with uh, construction. So um, surprisingly, I I enjoyed it. I thought I was going to be a similar type experience in the original Burley, but uh, I'll definitely pick this one over that. All right, Seth, what were your thoughts? Wait, was the cat, cap sweetening on this? Yeah. I thought it was there was a very subtle sweetness, but I, also, I thought there was a little bit of like a <clears throat> like a little slight spiciness kind of added there that I didn't get from the rest of the wrapper. So I didn't get I didn't get major sweetness. I mean, no, I was, not major sweetness. It was very subtle to me. It was yeah, very subtle. subtle, very subtle. subtle. Yeah, okay. The, yeah, the subtlest know. sweet cap I've ever uh, really had on a sweet cap cigar. Yeah. yeah. Good way. I mean, I I dropped acid beforehand, but um, <laughs> no. I mean, the first third was. Cream, cedar, hay. There were sweet spices. Um, I picked up some like nutmeg, anise notes, um, some coffee qualities. Um, just really a great first third. Um, second third started showing some some tropical fruit notes, um, some sweet cream qualities with the cedar. Um, final third was more in line with the first third. Just a really good flavorful smooth connecticut in my opinion with great construction all right john what were your thoughts so i also had a uh, interesting pre-light experience and i had to reach out to aaron privately i'm like did these cigars did something happen um the closest analogy i could make is that if these cigars were in a in a bag and some lafroig 16 kind of got sprinkled around because that's like that's the peat smoke sweetness that i was getting off and i'm like I'm like, this is really unusual and I'm concerned because it's a shade cigar and never in my life have I had these aromas off a shade cigar. So something's funky. Um, and I, I, interestingly enough, uh, so in the first third, I did actually get like a, almost a mild peat smoke uh, in the retrohale. It was very subtle, very light. Uh, there is definitely a sweet cabin. I think as June mentioned, what is nice about it is it, it doesn't have that cloying, 
artificial sweetness and if you've watched our reviews in the past you know that i that's a flavor that is particularly offensive to me i do not like that that artificial sweetness it saccharin i can't do diet pop it really for be- lack of a better term it anchors itself on my palate and i just can't shake it that wasn't the case here the sweetness kind of lingered for like maybe two seconds after a draw and then it just it was completely gone and there's no trace of it on my palate so uh first there was nice it had a lot of balanced complexity um that sort of peaty smoke kind of anchored everything together some nutmeg um i found the second third and last third to be kind of very traditionally connecticut i mean it was interesting but it just didn't elevate itself for me um you know with some hay uh some mild bitterness um and again a little bit of peat smoke at the first first half of the second third and then the last third was just really what i'd call uh not necessarily paint by numbers but certainly all the highlights of a connecticut shade so grass uh, bitter hay a little bit of cedar accents and that's that was really it and as juno alluded to it comes at a Hoya de Nicaragua. I don't think there's a factory I've been to more than Hoya de Nicaragua. I know they have great quality control, and that certainly shows here. Um, you know, really great burn, really great draw. Um, yeah. Aaron, walk us through your experience. Yeah, same as you, John. Um, had that uh, kind of, uh, you know, fire cured smokiness on the aroma from the wrapper. Also on the pre laid draw, I got some of that um, on the, uh, the head of the cigar. Um, I got like this little kind of subtle spiciness that was there that was not on the rest of the wrapper. Um, a really faint sweetness. I didn't, you know, it wasn't it wasn't as uh, distinct as it was on the original brulee uh, to me. But uh, the cigar had a nice start. Uh, had some mushroom mustiness, you know, gave a good boost to the dry wood and the baking spice that was there. But what that once that mushroom note kind of left the mustiness, um, it kind of dropped down to average for me and kind of maintained that level the rest of the way. Um, th- I think the cigar might have a little bit more oomph to it than the original brulee uh, in regards to strength, but um, you know nothing that's gonna you know put it over the top and that you wouldn't go go to it as a Connecticut shade cigar. Um, not anything really here that makes me want to come back to this one. Um, you know, I just I know that Seth and June had great experiences. It just didn't translate for me, so I, maybe I'd come back to it again just to try it out. But the price points pretty high so uh, as is most of steve's you know more recent cigars so it's kind of a tough one to you know recommend but i'd say you know try one see what you think if you like it go back to it and kind of go from there i guess all right so let's go to the score we'll start top with seth at 7.17 june gave it a 6.82 i gave it a six even and john gave it a 5.95 so seth, how that 7.17 match up for you uh perfectly i'm actually i, I mean that's after smoking that yeah it's that it's a great Connecticut out of Oya and really good flavor profile. It's to my liking, it's great steak. All right, June six point eight two. It's good. Um, I I would definitely smoke it again. The baby blue pops. I like the baby blue. Yeah, the baby baby blue is super yeah. good. I like that. I still wear a lot Tiffany of baby blue, blue. Right. Tiffany blue. Yeah. 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 It's a VS two fucking A clarity or whatever the fuck that grading <laughs> scale is. It's good. Okay, next. All right, so my six even matches up well. I mean, it was above average flavor profile, really good construction. It gets it right to that six bars. So, all right, John, 5.95. Yeah, I think you and I, Aaron, are pretty evenly matched. Uh, above average flavor profile, certainly enjoyable and pleasant. Um, you know, I had a slightly tight draw, which is why I'm, you know, a little bit below you. But um, I would I would smoke this again. It's just I think the price point in this is a little out of my range. What are they, like thirteen ninety five? Fourteen ninety five. Fourteen ninety five. Oh. yeah, that's a – that's a bit much, um, you know. No disrespect to Steve, it's just that's that's a lot for a Connecticut. So, um, a for that, quality, buddy. Yeah, that might that might put it out of my price range, unfortunately. All right. Any other final thoughts from you guys on this one? The blue really pops. I agree with Aaron. Or yeah. June. A lot yeah. better than the original brulee. It's better than the original brulee. Did it the br- did the original brulee have that pigtail cap on? I don't. I didn't. The man bun. The that. man bun. Yeah, I don't no. think it did. No, yeah, no, okay. No. no. That was an interesting. Think, is it, he is just. Do well, you think the man bun is what made it? I do. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 mean I would I would charge an extra couple bucks for the man bun. Oh, heck yeah. That's an extra two points for the man bun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, it didn't get anybody to make it very good in the pre light, though, so. It needed another complication. You, like the, that was uh, almost it, and I was like, man, with that baby blue, you're almost there. You're like a hair below that very good pre-light, not that it counts for anything. Um, but if he had like one other complication on there, that would have been it. 
All right. If you're just catching this video on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to us, but also read the full written review on the website, developingpalace.com. Follow us on the social media channels, and you can catch all of our review recaps on podcasts, iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Thank you for tuning in. We will catch you on the next one. <laughs>